On today's episode of the K-Swap 240 presented by Turn 14 Distribution, we have a whole bunch of odds and ends to wrap up today, including fans for the rad, a bunch of fire sleeving, some heat shielding. There's so much to do, you're gonna have to watch to see it all. It has been a few weeks since we've worked on the K-Swap 240, and that is because I've been waiting for some parts. There was a lot of odds and ends that we were missing. Like if you had watched the fuel episode, I was missing one fitting to complete the fuel system, and I ordered it from Vibrant. That has arrived, so we're just gonna screw this in. Actually, I should probably screw it in here first. Let's be honest, Pete, we were also uh, not working on this car because you've been uh, off enjoying uh, your life. Yeah, I did have a little bit of a vacation. It was a big uh, monumental life moment. Look at that. That's right, people. Hardware on the finger. I am now married, You ready to burn my finger while I weld. Apparently, I've already been told a couple times not to weld with a, a wedding ring on. So I'm gonna have to heed that advice. Anyways, let's get back to more important stuff. Um, so the other thing that we needed to get sorted out were the adapter fittings for our ID1050X injectors, and those arrived, so I'm gonna put those in. There we are, we have our adapter rings on. Let's drop this in here, like a boss like that, and then we can bolt these in. Oh, this one's not on, there we there go. go. Yeah. They're in, bam. Tighten that. Tighten that down. So we are going to call. Whoa, oh, almost lost that it. Into the abyss. I'm gonna call our fuel system done. So I can check it off the list. Like I said, I wanna make sure that I have everything somewhat together here mm -hmm. before we pull this motor out because the next thing that we're actually gonna be doing is a lot of whoop, oil pan work which is all of this. This is a track tough uh, front baffle, I guess. Yep, yeah. oil pan baffle. Yeah, and then uh, we've got a Circuit Hero oil pan baffle as well that is gonna sit in there. And because we're going to be adding capacity on, I've got some trap doors. Nice. So we've got all these fixings, but this is gonna be an NV Auto job. Yep. Um, However, we're gonna mock stuff up, so next episode, you'll see all that come together. But moving on here, well, what do we do here, Dave? Look at it, I've got everything ready to go. Well, you know what's gonna happen right now, Peter, is people are gonna see the two post lift in the background, and they're gonna wanna know what's going on there, so maybe a quick spiel on that a before detour? a spiel on that. Okay, all right. We got ourselves a lift, yes. a rotary lift. <laughs> it is fantastic. It is currently non-functional because we bought it used, and apparently, the cables that ran in it were too short, so the guy that installed it is actually going to get them, and then we're gonna have an electrician come in, wire this thing up, and ah, the next time I'm working on the 240, it will be on the lift. On another old episode, we had covered off the power steering, and I had used this fitting on the rack side, and I read a bunch of the comments, and you guys mentioned that this is gonna leak, and you can see it kind of was sealing, but really this isn't the proper way to do it. So I found a company called Cutworm Specialties that makes the perfect fitting for the rack, and this was like 1250, so it's a, a great alternative to this, which is more commonly found, but is gonna leak. So um, with this fitting now, I can fit the power steering line up, and we can cross that off the list as well. Time to hook the line up to the pump, I guess, eh? Yeah, and then we've got a great fit with that Cutworm Specialties tool, or uh, fitting. So, now this may be... It's always tricky getting these on. Yeah, it? and it's just tight in this area. But, it's always just, you gotta get the alignment just right on it. See, I yeah. thought I had it, but I didn't. Bam, we are on, yes. All right. Tighten well, that puppy down. I'm not gonna tighten it yet, because this motor's gotta come out. Oh, okay. But 
we now have a fully functional and non-leaking power steering system. So let's move on. Next up, we have our fan shroud. This is a Mishimoto fan shroud and these two fans combined push 2300 CFM, which is a, uh, a pretty large number. I've looked into like the Taurus ones, a bunch of 240 guys run OEM ones and actually these ones do outperform them. And best of all, they're a direct fit. And I think that's what I really like about them. Um, they bolt right in and they're very slim. Not that we're gonna have issues here, but if you're putting in a 2J or an RB or a V8, you do have very little real estate or for a, a huge fan. top mount turbo right here. Yeah, here. so this is gonna, uh, this is certainly a good setup in that sense. Obviously we're gonna get to wiring these in later. That is for another episode, but I have to drill. Yeah, I've got a hole here that I need to drill so I can mount up our lower cooling pipe. Oh, not too tight. I don't right. wanna strip that aluminum, but would you look at that? We've got the fan in, I've got my lower pipe bolted on, and it's, 99% straight to <laughs> the rad. Yeah, no, it looks so good. I'll, I'll take it. Yep. I think I can squeeze it in a little bit further to straighten it out, but it's good. Yeah, so that is a wrap for the cooling system. Now we're gonna move on to the header area. Uh, Vin was nice enough to weld these little brackets on, which will allow me to bolt the heat shield up. Now, I really wanted to make sure that this heat shield would work because Actually, before I bolt it on, like, look at how well and all the, the, uh, the material that's used on this and how well built it is mm -hmm. to isolate heat and kind of protect it from escaping. And I think that's going to be a key to keeping this whole area cool. Keep the I know, fuel system yeah, cool. and a lot yeah. of people were saying, oh, you might have issues with it. But I'm pretty confident that with these heat shields here, we're not going to deal with too many problems. Like... I had built a V8 S13 in the past where the fuel system ran down the one side and there was a, a hot cat there and it seemed to have, uh, have been fine for the most part. There was one trip through the desert that gave me problems, but we're not driving this thing in the desert for eight hours. So, however, down below, there's gonna be another item that I'm gonna work on once I get this heat shield on to provide even more heat isolation on the exhaust. But look at that, before I bolt that, actually I'm not even gonna bolt this in place because this is all gotta come off, but uh, that looks good. Very S2000-esque on a K-Series, which I love. You sure we're not going turbo? Not yet, but I am future-proofing this. Um, here's our test pipe that does run pretty close to the fuel lines, so I figure it's a good start to wrap it. I mean, NA wise, I'm pretty confident you'd be okay. You wouldn't have to do all this work, but I don't wanna have to do this and then go back and touch it when we go turbo. I just wanna slap a turbo on there and go rip. So I'm gonna work on wrapping this entire pipe here. So the theory is to trap heat in the exhaust with this wrap, yeah. keep it off the fuel lines? Exactly, it'll just help a little bit in terms of that. And then I'll wrap the fuel lines as well, do a couple of things under there, which should really make it not ever have any issues in terms of look dealing with the heat. Fancy stainless zip tie. I know, too. well, that's what, that's what you gotta use when you're doing man. the heat wrap. So baller, Peter. That's Peter's. the only way to do it, man. I just gotta get it lined up properly, you know? Time for a quick test fit. Yep, as you can see, the wrap's on there pretty good. Some people actually soak it when they're wrapping it for reasons I don't necessarily understand. I think it gives you a tighter wrap. Maybe. But then it, uh, I think, soaks the entire metal. And even though it's stainless, I do find heat wrap does eventually like oxidize and corrode the metal, yeah. no matter if it's stainless or not. So uh, I just went with the dry method. I think we're good in that sense. So yeah, I'm gonna test fit this and move on to adding a couple more little uh, sleeves onto the fuel lines here. You see, we're, we're not that close to the fuel lines, but I'm still going to grab some of this 
DEI heat sleeving that I have kicking around and just wrap these lines here just to give them another level of uh, heat protection. The exceptional thing with this DEI heat shielding is that it is split in half. So usually the stuff that I moved, used up top here, it was just a kind of cover that you would have to run over the fuel line. And if I try to use all that, that would mean a very long and tedious job trying to get it on all these lines, having to disconnect them again. But this stuff here has Velcro and all I did was loosen the fuel lines up, wrap it around. I just slid a hole for the bracket that will bolt to the chassis right there. And now you just kind of pull it tight and remarkably it fits really, really well. It's almost like it was meant for these fuel lines like that. So I'm gonna bolt this back up, but man, I think with this wrapped, this wrapped, we are gonna have zero issues with heating the fuel. Don't like that brown belt, Pete? Ah, oh, it is time for this guy to go. It's probably better to slip it off here. There we are. You might even say you're graduating from a brown belt to a black belt. <laughs> oh, oh, ooh, that's a good one. The dad jokes are strong. That is a good one. And really the, the only reason I'm showing this is I just want to mention that the stock RSX Type S belt does work and the product number is 5070675 or 7PK1715. So if you're in the market for a belt that you know is gonna work on this, this is the go-to and it's gonna clean this up and it's gonna look much nicer. I still have to do all these pulleys though. Just remember, this yeah. is going to get cleaned up, will, so most of it. You need black pulleys to match that black belt. That's though, right. Sure. The last thing left on the list is kind of the most important for me, and that is the shift, Ooh, knob. the shift knob. Yeah, check that out. So this is the Circuit Hero shift knob, the teardrop one, and it is a, an M10 by 1.25 and an extender. I'm not sure if I'm gonna need the extender or not. So let's start off with the shift knob here and bolt this guy on and see whether it sits a little too low or I wanna go full race spec. Oh man, the weight of this. Nice. Really nice, I like it. I love how clean and simple it looks too. So for yeah. me, that's exactly what I wanted in a finish. Yeah, oh man, that's nice. That is real nice. I'm, I don't know. I mean, it seems like it could be all right, but. I don't know. I, I think kinda, I want the extender on there. Yeah. I ordered the extender for a reason. And I had one in my Integra with a K-Swap and it was fantastic. It kind of like raised it up to this very race spec style for a, a shifting position. And let's see, oh yeah. That looks like it's gonna be good. Gonna be real good. Oh, look at that, DP. Oh, yeah. Pick up. There we go. That's what you want. Like a rally car. Bam. Love it. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Banging gears like a champ. I like it. I think I'm gonna stick with that. I know it certainly does increase the throw a little bit, but I don't necessarily find the throw is ever to be a problem. No, not me. on a K box. They're no, exactly. So short, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's not a K box, but oh, you're right. Uh, <laughs> it's it's that F. I... Yeah. No, it, it uh, to me it comes down to more of how the transmission feels, the in between shifts. If you can bang a gear quickly without a lot of resistance, then the travel isn't a big deal. But obviously, we have the Miata or the K Miata short shifter on here already, so that reduces it. This adds a little bit more, and the extension added. So, anyways. I'm pretty happy with this. I think we're good to go. So that is a wrap on this quick episode. Next episode, we are going to be getting to the oil pan, which is going to be exciting times. And that's why I've been mentioning a lot about pulling the engine out again, because it has to go back to NV Auto. We got to mock all that up, because that is a crucial part to making sure that this engine lives happily on a racetrack, because we do not want to deal with oil starvation. So. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up, make sure to subscribe and mark that notification bell to keep track of all our videos. And if you want, join our Hot Lap Club. We've got a ton of really cool giveaways coming up. So if you join that, you're automatically entered for a lot of cool free stuff that we're giving away.
In a previous episode, some of you commented that the heater hose routing was gonna create a big air pocket, and I did think of that. What I would do is just spin this hose around, flip this around like this, and now we'll have a low spot there. So I think we're still gonna have a high spot up in on this.